many chat and it's active campaign. We're live now. And it's like 18 different things. And oh, then, you do like many chat in? Oh, are you pushing out like broadcast to this? Correct. And okay. what I haven't figured out, by the way, is how to link directly to like the interview. So I have to like send it to the group and then I pin it to the top. So like, oh, yeah. it's always like, a, it's so many things. Like I get nervous before I go to an airport, just thinking about having to like get to an airport. And it's <laughs> the same feeling in life to shake it out because like- Yeah, it's like all, all this- <laughs> All the stuff that could go wrong, right? But yeah. I want to say that I remember, I mean, I looked at our chat and mm -hmm. I, I think like, it was like a year ago or something. I was like, damn, Nico, you're exactly where I want to be. Like I remember being in the Starbucks. I remember, I, was, I remember you sending me that. It was right? on like a webinar. Yeah, like I was watching your webinar, I was in Starbucks and I couldn't figure out my webinar. And I was like, did he just quote me? He did. And like, <laughs> and at first I was like, that guy looks like me. And I realized that's what it was. And I send it to you, I was like, that's absolutely fantastic. That's like so fucking cool. Oh yeah, and then, yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, and it was like, it's your actual webinar. What was that webinar about? Do you remember? Or was that like- It was your... for a Facebook ads course. Gotcha, okay. Was that the yeah. first course you launched or no? No, that was like the, that was the second one I launched. So the gotcha. first one, uh, first one we can go into like if you want. It looks like there's people watching now. Yeah. First one, first course I ever launched made zero dollars. Yeah. Uh, that was my own product. Um, the second one, which was the Facebook ads one, I think I sold like one. I sold like one, like maybe two. I sold uh -huh. one full price, and then the second one, like I had to like I didn't really like believe in myself or the product yet. So like this one person was on the fence, and I was like, oh, like I'll give you a discount. And they were like, okay, I'll get it. So right. it didn't it didn't go very well. The third one was a copywriting course. That one did like all right. Didn't then, didn't Spencer include it or something like that? Yeah, yeah he, he did, actually right? bought the he actually like bought well, he bought the course when I launched it like a year, more than a year ago, maybe like two years ago. Yeah. And then he a couple of months or yeah, a couple of months ago or something, he bought um, oh that actually reminds me I need to reach out to him. He bought <laughs> um the rights to it to use Beautiful. in his group, yeah. That's so cool. So now he's able to like use that in his group, like for. F I think it's like a free thing in his group. So now everybody that's watching knows that you can get it for free there. But um, so, yeah, the first course you did bombed. The second mm -hmm. course almost bombed. The third course was a copywriting course and that kind of worked. And then yeah. the fourth one you did, that's like what really took off, right? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Before that's we go that. into that. Okay. Before I go into that. Mm -hmm. We need to go back to the beginning when you had That's that really nine to five, right? And like mm -hmm. I had my nine to five. It was the first big job I ever had. It was a company in Dallas. It was in Plano, Texas. Wait, I, I live, oh, we talked about this. I live in yeah, Dallas. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy. the don't say the name, but it it starts with an E and ends with Ericsson, right? Yeah. So that company, right? <laughs> so I worked for them, and it was my first big job out of like my MBA program. And I was like, yes, I made it. Forever Company, four hundred one k. It was going to be amazing. And I was uh, their Lean Six Sigma and business process guy on their sales and marketing team, which is a long title for just yeah. lead sales ROI. Like I did all their like marketing tech, right? Uh -huh. And I ended up getting fired three times. Oh, no in nine, fired three times in nine months. Really? Like division like laid, off, laid off, laid off, laid off. It was a running joke between me and I friends because I would get fired. Then they say, mm, just kidding, you're transferred. And like the whole time I was doing like side work for the vice president of HR. She's mm -hmm. like, no, you're transferred. She transferred me like five times, right? Like to get ahead of these layoffs. Uh -huh. And after like the third time, I was like, I'm done here, guys. Like at this point, my girlfriend moved to India. It took back the apartment. It took back the car. I moved back home with my parents in her spare bedroom at 30. Like my nine to five experience sucked. Yeah. What was yours like? Mine was bad too. Like it was... <laughs> Gosh, okay, it was rough. See, so here's the thing. Like externally, everything like everything was great. Yeah. Right. So like I actually so for those of you guys who haven't met me or who've never like heard of me, um, I grew up in California. I went to college at uh, University of Southern California, so in LA, which is like it's a pretty good school. And like a lot of like a lot of like big companies, like they recruit there for people who are like just about to graduate. So that's yeah. kind of the situation that I was in. Um, I actually studied chemistry which like of all things, which is like literally, unless you want to be a chemist, like it's not related to anything. Not useful. <laughs> no, it's really not. Um, but I ended up getting recruited. Like I remember it was the week of, it was like literally the week before like my college senior like finals. And I was like, oh my God, like I don't have a job. Like I don't know what I'm going to do. Like I don't want to be a chemist. What do I do? And I got the offer 
like on that got the job offer like on my birthday which also was like the day before my very last final started i was like oh my god okay like i'm set like i don't really have to study anymore even though i'm I not, still a, studied, not a failure like, at life yet my parents aren't that ashamed of me i'm gonna be okay yeah yeah so it was like such a relief um and so i ended up working at a tech company it's called oracle yep and oracle yeah yeah, so it was like a software company and the location that I was gonna be at was up in like San Francisco Bay Area. So literally like the tech hub of kind of of the world. Yeah. Um, so I was like really, really cool. I was actually really excited at the time. I had about like one month between graduation and like getting into that nine to five. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm gonna be working at this cool tech start or it's cool like big tech company and like my parents were all proud yep. and everything. And so it was really, really awesome like in the beginning. And they, I mean, it's like a well-established like software company. So like yep. they take really good care of their employees. Like the pay is good and they had like all these perks and everything and like all the people who got hired. Wait, did you join when they had the new CEO? Not, um, not the, the original guy. Fuck. What was his name? Larry Ellison. Yeah. It's the new guy. It's a dude from HP now, right? Heard Mark heard. Yeah. Yeah. That happened like, kind of, that happened like after I was already there. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But it was like shortly after, like I was still working for them. Um, but yeah, so I got all excited and like, I was going to go like move up to work at this big fancy tech company. And I went, I went in like first week we had like kind of like training. Yeah. Um, so we weren't actually doing like the actual real work, but it was literally like day four of the training, like not even the fir first full week, like at the end of that Thursday night, like I picked up the phone and I called my mom and I was like, like, I cannot do this. Like, I hate this. This is like, bad. This is not for me. Like, I can't do it. And she was like, oh, my God. Like, what's wrong? Like, like why, like, why are you saying that? You were so excited. And I was like, yeah, I know. Like, it's just, it's so boring. Like, literally after four days, like, I feel like I'm going to, like, shoot myself. Yep. So, literally. Uh, okay. So, anyways, fast forward. For I, I ended up sticking it out for a year because basically what they did, it was really bad, right? Cause, like, it was kind of, like money driven because they gave you this really big like signing bonus yeah but if you so like just to like plus your regular salary so like i said the salary is pretty good and they also gave you like a pretty fat signing bonus yeah but if you left i feel like they knew because if you left before one year then you had to give back the signing bonus oh they know the analytics yeah, yeah. so they knew that you were like gonna hate it and probably want to quit right away and so i was like okay like, I'm just going to stick it out for one year. Um, and so I did. It was really, like, I feel really bad complaining because, like, it's actually, it was a, you know, a pretty, like, we got, you know, a good salary. All benefits were taken care of. And, like, really it was not, you know, for someone who's, like, just looking to, like, you know, be comfortable and, like, have a stable living and a stable income, like, there was really nothing wrong with it. But yeah. it was something that, I just, you know, in college, like I was used to doing things kind of like that were like, you know, mentally stimulating and challenging and exciting. And yep. that job was like the absolute opposite of it. Yep. Like if anyone here has ever seen that show Silicon Valley, where like I've only seen a couple episodes, but it's like shockingly accurate where like people are just like they get paid like, you know, these really high salaries to stay in these jobs, but they, there's not enough work. Yep, and, like, they're they literally are, yeah, they're literally just like sitting there like doing nothing. And like, that's what my, like one of my best friends who worked there, like the whole year she was from Stanford. Mm -hmm. um, and we literally, we were in the exact same scenario. That's why we were such good friends. We were like, oh my God, like we're quitting. Like day 365, we're both quitting. This job sucks. It's so boring. And we literally would just sit there like pretending to do stuff. Yep. Like for someone like, and again, I feel like bad like kind of knocking it off because it really is, it really was like in so many ways it was a gift. Yep. But it really just for someone who knows that they're capable of more and like wants to do more, it's really just like a buzzkill. So you were you were in a job that like just didn't match you and your personality, right? Like mm -hmm. like without regard to like the money, without regard to the nine to five, you were just doing something that just wasn't you, right? Yep. And that was my same experience at Intel. So I worked for Intel in Santa Clara. Mm -hmm. And they, they shuttled us between Portland, Oregon, and San Francisco Bay because oh, housing dang. was so expensive in San Francisco Bay. They mm -hmm. said, we're going to pay you less and just keep you in Portland. I was like, fine, right? What do I care, right? And I ended up working for Intel for a year and a half, and then I moved to Ericsson in Dallas, right? Okay. Um, but it, with Intel, it was like somewhat exciting. In Dallas, it was like you're waiting to end, right? 
And I got, oh, like, it, it was it was horrible. And around this time I was reading the book by Reed Hoffman about like, he helped found LinkedIn and PayPal Mafia and all that stuff, Reed Hoffman. And he talked about how like the employer to employee relationship is inherently dishonest. Like, and I was like, I lived it because I got recruited saying, you're gonna work on what you want. It's gonna be exciting. It's gonna be amazing, it's gonna be so great. And you sit down and you get oriented, right? Mm. And the, the paperwork says you can be fired at any time for whatever reason. You get to transfer you all across the world and reduce your pay for whatever reason. I was like, like immediately it broke. Like if that was somebody <laughs> you were dating and you're like, what happened to date number one and date number two? You'd be like, this person's bipolar, right? But that's a corporation, right? Uh -huh. So either way you work for them. After all, you quit, you get fired. You say, that's the end of it. I'm not doing this anymore. Then what happens? Yeah. So then what happened was, so, okay, let's kind of fast forward to like the last couple of months. I kind of started to realize, okay, like I, like, I know I'm going to be doing something else. Like I need to like, you know, break free of these golden handcuffs, if that's what you want to call it. Yep. But like, I, I mean, I, w I wasn't the type of person that like, wasn't going to at least have like some sort of an idea of what I was going to do. So I actually started, I read this book called the four hour work week. Probably yep. a lot of you guys have read it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And so that kind of got me thinking like, okay, there is some way out there to make money online. Like, I don't really know what it is yet, but like, there's a way. So I was kind of like determined to figure out some way to make money online. So the first thing that I did, uh, before I, before I quit, like my, you know, my day job, I, I ended up buying this course. It was like, I can't remember what it was called. It had something to do with, it was Kindle Money Mastery is what it was called. Basically like, it was like Amazon Kindle? Yeah, so it was like a $47 little course that taught <laughs> you how to create and publish eBooks on yeah. Kindle. And it was actually a really, you know, like for someone who's just starting out, it was actually a really good business model because, you know, with Amazon Kindle, like you don't have to, there's literally like no upfront crop cost to like publish yep. your book on their website like you just create the pdf whatever and you like upload it and then you know you can theoretically like start just making sales yep um so it was, it was a very like it was a good like first way to try and make money online but i you know i really was not making that much it was probably just like a couple hundred dollars per month mm -hmm. um and then so basically when i actually ended up working at um another i actually ended up working at like two like tech startups, like, so I quit that first job that I just like, absolutely hated. Oracle and San um, Francisco. Yeah, Oracle. I quit that first one. That was like the absolute worst. Um, and I was kind of, at the same time, I was like experimenting with like make money online things and kind of like, I was like halfway in with like these other two startups. I didn't last very long at, th at these other ones either because I knew that it was just like a means to an end. Mm -hmm. But then I started, um, started making money, a little bit of money with like this, you know, Amazon ebook thing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, at this point, I'm just like completely fed up with working for someone else. Like I can't do it. And like, they, they know too, like I was telling you yesterday, like there was one point, um, like my very, very last job, which was not a, it was not an Oracle. It was at like a tech startup. Um, I would say like about a month before I was like completely checked out. Like the boss could tell. And like one day he asked, like, he's like, Hey, like, we're actually pushing out this new launch for like a software thing. And I was on the QA, like the software QA team. So I had to like make sure like there were no bugs uh -huh. and stuff. Um, and he was like, like we need like one person from the QA team to stay like all night, like to just make sure everything doesn't crash. And he was like, like, I need you to do it. And I was just like, no, <laughs> like I straight up, I straight up said like, I can't do it. Like, no, that's from office space. You're just like, no, nah, I'm not, I don't want to do that. Nah. <laughs> and like he was like really mad but like he yeah. didn't say anything um and so like someone else ended up doing it and then basically you know I, I already knew i was like you know about to leave and i was making a little bit of money online and i was kind of planning like in about one or two weeks that was right before the holidays so it was like mm -hmm. christmas and then new year's then right after that um i was like okay you know like i had in my head like the day that i was gonna tell them that I was gonna leave. And then literally the same day, it was so weird. The same day, like my manager, or actually like the manager above my manager, uh -huh. like requested like a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me or whatever. And but it, and it was like at the end of that day. Yeah. And I was like, oh crap, like what's was that? Was it about? a Thursday? I don't remember what day of the week it was. Um, but like God, I honestly I feel like it was like actually a Monday or a Tuesday or something. Yeah. Um, why? <laughs> no, cause like I got fired on a Thursday 
Okay. And like, I end up reading like who at Google News, they always fire on a Thursday because you can take Friday off and like you're not like angry because you took a Friday off type thing. But if oh. they fire you on like a Monday or two, they spend the whole work week going, oh, I could have been working and making money and blah, blah, blah. But that yeah. could be some like psychological crap. I don't know. Any, but anyways, yeah, it was like they requested this meeting with me like at the very end of the day, but it was my manager's manager. And so yeah. I was like, okay, I just got to tell my manager like before then that I'm leaving so that like I have the upper hand because that was literally the same day that I was going to leave anyway, which was just super weird. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, I told her and she was like, oh, like I saw it coming, uh, blah, blah, blah. And anyways, so that ended. Um, and then I was just kind of like free. I didn't really, like I said, at that point, I didn't really have a super stable income, but I had some money saved up and I was confident yeah. that really the only thing that I had was like, I had the confidence and the belief that like some way, somehow it would work eventually. Yeah. I didn't know if what I had right now was the way, but I knew that it was possible. I knew that other people were out there doing it. And so like at that point with the, with a little bit of money that I had saved up and <laughs> my like, you know, somewhat like micro success with making some money online. I was like, okay, like this is enough. Like I'm quitting. Yeah. So that was it. I quit that job. Um, I still lived in California for about like maybe two ish months or so. And then I actually moved to Japan. Oh, for, okay. For three months. Yeah. So that you was really place more expensive. Got it. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. So here's the funny thing. Everybody says that. And I thought that too, but it's absolutely untrue. It's like actually the opposite. Really? Everything there is, I mean, I feel like you can you can really like make it a lot more expensive if you want to like you know dine at the fanciest places and like stay in the fanciest hotels. But if right. you try to like make it affordable, it's actually much cheaper. Gotcha. Like it's the food is so good. Like the sushi is like for like four dollars you can get like a quality like nice like thirty dollar sushi meal here. Yeah. For like four or five dollars there, it's gotcha. crazy. And like so the housing is cheaper and like yeah. Gotcha. So you work at Oracle. This job sucks. You download and you execute on this Kindle marketing mastery book, mm -hmm. and it proves to you in the universe that you could sell stuff online. Yeah. While this is happening, you have like two startup jobs. Both suck. One day you wake up and you're like, that's it. And they say, see you later. Bye. You move to Japan. Right. Yep. Is that when you said, I'm going to start my agency? Or is that when you just kind of reset everything and figured out Nico 2.0? Yeah, that was kind of, that was really a period of more like resetting and figuring out how I was going to make something work. Cause like I yeah. said at that, yeah. So at that point I didn't, I hadn't really like settled on whether I was going to do an agency model or anything. Like I didn't even know what that was at that point, to be honest, I was just kind of like, okay, I've got to figure out some way to make money online. And like, it's got to happen pretty quick. Cause like I had, you know, I had some savings, but like I was currently making zero. Yeah. Like at that point or, you know, what, like a couple hundred dollars a month, basically zero. Um, and so at that point, I, when I was literally the whole time I was in Japan, like it was a really cool, like valuable time overall, but it was also a lot of, there was also a lot of like uncertainty yeah. and stress with it because like I was just in a completely different environment. I didn't know anyone. Um, I mean, I didn't like, my parents weren't there like anywhere nearby to like kind of like, you know, give me like pep talks when I was having like moments of doubt about whether the whole entrepreneurship thing that I had just dove into like a thousand percent is actually going to work. So it was yeah. like all this like self doubt, like, Oh my God, am I going to find a way to make money online? And like, I was kind of just really like looking on ClickBank for yeah. like affiliate stuff. I was like, okay, should I just like do affiliate marketing? Like, and then I was seeing like a lot of just stuff on YouTube. It was kind of just like, I would say like a solid like three months of just like st like doing all the struggly stuff like right at once. I was like, okay, YouTube like person yeah. makes like thirty thousand dollars in one day. Okay, like I'm gonna try and like do that. Yeah, and then like it didn't really work. And then I was like, okay, God, like day two, like I got to move on to something else. So it was it was really just a lot of like really a lot of uncertainty for sure. Gotcha. And so when did you officially say? I mean, you start up doing Facebook ads for local businesses, right? Um, I started doing copywriting, actually. You started doing copywriting. Thing. Got it. Yeah, that was so, the very first thing. So did you get, so I, I remember I interviewed Danny Velez way back in the day, and he started doing like $25 copywriting jobs, mm -hmm. and he grew his like fee to like $7,000 by reading old school books like Gary Halpert that I didn't even know was a thing, 
and mm -hmm. the dude with the upside down horseshoe mustache, which I totally effing forget right now. And like the grandfather, the grandfather's <laughs> the Frank Kern, like those types of people, right? Okay. So yeah. did as you're going on this like figuring out Nico 2.0 journey, did you all of a sudden fit on like copywriting and say, I'm gonna do copywriting? Or did you dabble and fail a bunch of other things along the way? Like, did you have a Shopify store and say, oh, that didn't fucking work, right? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I, I would say the best way to put it is like, I dabbled at like a couple, a couple different things, like really all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And like, I just like, they weren't really working enough for me to settle on any one of them. So yeah, I definitely went through the dabbler phase for like yep. a solid, like three or four months. I was just like trying everything, like build an email list, like do affiliate marketing, like promote stuff on YouTube. Um, yeah. So I was doing that. I did like, like I said, the Kindle ebook thing was like really the only way that I actually made money. And it's yeah. actually, it still makes like, I don't know, like a hundred dollars a month or something. Like it still is making it for me. Which is pretty, yeah, I know. Um, so that's pretty cool. But yeah, so I, I definitely like had those couple months um, where it was just like really constant struggle and like constant uncertainty of like moving from thing to thing. Gotcha. And then what I would say, or sorry, go ahead. No, continue. Yeah. So then as I was kind of going into, this is kind of where things started to change. I was on ClickBank a lot. And I watched some YouTube videos on how to find like what are actually good, pro like how to tell which products on ClickBank are the ones that are making money so yep. that you can promote those. And so I started noticing like three or four, there were three or four products that I was like, okay, these ones are doing well. Um, like I'm just gonna like check them out. Right. And so I started to actually like, and they were kind of like those, not like, I wouldn't say scammy necessarily, but like, you know, like when you see the long form sales page with like the video sales letter. Yeah. And like, it's like, it starts playing and it's like how to make like blah, blah, blah or like how to like. How to save $400 a year by recharging your own batteries or something. Yeah, like or like how to achieve your dream life with no effort. It was yep. like all of that sort of stuff. And like I ended up looking, there was some like way that you could kind of figure out how much they were making. And some of them were making like hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. And like right <laughs> away I was like, I was like from this thing, like this thing totally, like it sounds like, I remember watching, I guess we saw the same Russell Brunson onboarding video, right? Where like he, he takes you to like the ClickFunnels CEO and he's like, just look it up. And I looked yeah, it up yeah. and I, I was like, I, I don't believe this is true. Like that has to be the most elaborate lie I've ever seen. Like there's no way in hell you're selling $200,000 on how to save $4 a month with chicken coops. Like there's no way, right? But it's true. I, know. I don't want it to be true, but it's so true. So yeah. it's, yeah. So. That's kind of what I started, that's kind of what I did. Um, and I noticed there were like, I don't know, three or four products that were kind of, um, I would say like the ones that I settled on that I was gonna try and figure out how to promote and make money. Yeah. Um, but what I started to notice is like, I was reading like the long form sales pages and like listening to the sales videos and I was like, okay, I gotta figure out like how to promote these. But as I was reading through them, I just started to notice like very similar, like incredibly similar patterns between all four of them. Like they were yeah. all like kind of the same, saying the same sort of thing, even though one of them was on like personal development kind of and like mindset and like how to have the mind of a millionaire. And then other ones were like how to make like, you know, $30,000 per month with an email list. But they're literally like the message was the same. Yeah. The like when you're, when you're reading the, the these, like the letters, like these long form, they've got to be like, 10 scrolls down, right? Mm -hmm. You're seeing patterns. Yeah. Right? You're seeing the same things happen up and up, uh, happen again and again. And is that when your brain said, I can do this? Or is that when you kept moving forward? That was, a, at that point, I was like, there's something, like there's something to the way that these specific sales pages are being written that's yeah. making them so effective. And so that was basically just like I had that realization right there. I was like, okay, there's something having to do with the copy right here. That's it. And then I would, and then at that point, it was kind of at the same point where I was starting to realize there was one specific online marketer who like really just resonated with me. Like I would follow all of her, like read all her emails, like read all her blog posts. And she all, she offered like online business coaching. Yeah. And so at that, and like I saw her testimonials, she was getting really good results. And I was like, okay, like at this point, like, I don't know what to do. Uh, but like, I trust her, like, yeah, I've been following her for a while, and like, so I put in an application to like 
be her coaching student and to like work with her one on one. No shit, you took the plunge. Congratulations, that's awesome. Yeah, so I was, and I was afraid. Like, like I said, I was making like, like about a hundred, you know, whatever, hundred, basically zero dollars per month is what it felt yeah. like when I was like doing all this struggle and like traveling around the world. I was essentially not really making an income, and so it totally freaked me out. But like after like three or four months, I was like. Like I literally, I just don't know what to do. Yep. So like this girl, like I, like I trust her like above any other person that I've been following online. She seems to know what she's doing. So like, I'm going to like, just go for it. And I applied and it took her like two weeks to get back to me. And like, you, you know, you can see if you have the specific Chrome plugin, you can like see if they read it or not. Yeah. Like the email or whatever. And I could see that she read it. And I was like, I kept like responding and I was like, please. Like, like at that point I was kind of just like, like I was kind of hanging on like her being my coach right? for me to like feel like I could actually like start doing something because I just didn't know what to do. And like I had this interest. I was like, okay, all these sales pages and sales videos are making a ton of money. Right. It must be the copy. Maybe I could do copywriting, but I don't really know. And then I was like, okay, this coach like just like helped me. It was like all at the same time. I was like, I need someone to help me like, put the final pieces together before I can actually like start doing something. And gotcha. so ended up, ended up like long story short, she ended up like accepting my application and we started working together. It was, I think she was like $597 a month. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it wasn't like one of those like, you know, $40,000 like business coaches or whatever. Like it wasn't, yeah. you know, I wasn't going to be like in debt or something like right away, but it was still like, it was still enough of an investment for me at the time. Like, never having bought anything online except for like one $47 course. I was like, okay, like it's, it's in your heart. Like, like help me, help me do this now. Isn't and it, it's, it's so weird. Like how our brains work. Like, like I, I, you and I have seen both the same day and Henry Russell Brunson and Billy Jean's videos. Like, look, it's a thousand bucks and we'll get you up to 6,000 a month. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Oh, I know it's just too much. And you know what? It's our stupid brains because mm -hmm. I've said that to right, right in front of people. Like, Dead, like to my webinar coach, it's like, Jeff, I can get your webinar up and running and I'm going to charge you. And it was like five figures of, I don't know if I can do it. He's like, Jeff, you're going to make like an F ton of more money. Like I coach all these people like I don't know if I can do that. So yeah. it's not a person thing. Mm -hmm. It's a brain thing. Like we will always think that it's not worth it. It's not going to happen. But you took the plunge and she's charging you 600 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. She shows you what to do and how to do it. And did that lead to your $25,000 client or was that later on? That was a bit later on, gotcha. but I still like, she totally changed my life, like completely. Like I still like follow her on Instagram. She doesn't, I don't think she does business coaching anymore, mm -hmm. but like we still stay in touch. And like, she had a baby like with her husband. And I literally like, I sent her baby like a care package and like a card when she like had the baby yeah. because that's how much of an impact like she had on my life. Like within, like I would have to actually like go back to my testimonial for her and like see what the numbers were, but she totally like, Within the first month, like I made like probably like two or three thousand dollars. Beautiful. And that was from like zero like before that, like I didn't know what to do. Like I didn't know how to make money online. Like first month, literally like the first coaching call, I felt like my mindset was like I just was like, Oh my god, like I have faith, like this is gonna work now. Like I, yeah. I like it was literally just like that very first coaching call that like changed my life. And then so working with her, sorry. So um, how did you find that first two to three thousand dollar dollars worth of clients? Yeah. So what she had me do, she was like, "Okay, Nico, like, tell me, like, what you're interested in, like, what do you think you're good at, um, and like, do you have any sort of direction?" Um, and I was basically like, "Okay, well, I, I think copywriting is really cool. Like, you know, I, I'm actually like good at writing. I like it, and I've been following like actual specific like sales and marketing writing mm -hmm. too to sell products." So I think I could do that. And she was like, perfect. Like, that's actually like what I started doing too. Like before I started doing like blogging, she was like a copywriter too. Yep. And so I was like, oh my God, okay, perfect. So she was like, let's just roll with that. Like, don't doubt it. Like you're, you're doing copywriting. And I was like, okay, cool. And so then uh, with that, she, she kind of like coached me basically on how to, or she was like, have you ever like, basically her mindset and her, which is really like, simple but also very effective she was like okay have you ever done anything that and like that's worked that's gotten you a result yeah and i was like okay yeah well actually i had like 
just a week ago or just two weeks ago, like I found someone on Facebook that said that they were looking for like copywriting help or whatever. I think right. it was just like, it was in like a random Facebook group. Yeah. Um, they didn't even like, you know, we didn't really have much of a conversation, but I was like, I just remembered seeing that. And I was like, oh yeah, well I found this person that needed some copywriting help um, on Facebook. And she's like, okay, cool. Like we're focusing on Facebook is going to be your platform for right now. She, yeah. I loved her. Like she was just kind of like, okay, like we're making the decision now and it's done and you're going to do that. And like, let's keep moving. Um, and I think that's kind of what helped me get the early momentum. But so basically I doubled down on like Facebook. Sorry. I thought was, I don't know if you could hear that. Good. Yeah, don't. Uh, okay. Anyways, we doubled down on Facebook. And yeah, within within the first month, like she kind of helped me clarify my message and like how to you know talk to prospective clients and then how much to start charging at the beginning, um, which was just like I think my first couple of clients were like one hundred and fifty dollars or like three hundred dollars, like yep. five hundred dollars or something like that, like maximum. And so like you know it, it was a lot of clients. Like it took a lot of work to like make it to two thousand to three thousand uh, dollars, but I did it. Yep. And so that was kind of like right away. Like at that point I was just like, okay, like I'm sold. Like she's like, I'm going to be working with her for a long time. We ended up working together for like almost a year. Beautiful. Um, yeah. And she got me to 10 K um, within like, gosh, it was within like five months. Like That's a 10, so cool. A 10K like, month. Yeah. It, it took college four years to get you to 10 K a month. And this yeah. lady did it in less than six. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you got your first big client by just being part of some Facebook groups where your best future clients exist, mm -hmm. interacting with it with them, and then followed like a sales process. I call it conversations to clients. Like you have a conversation and say, I can do that in exchange for money. And they go, Great, how much? It's this amount. Okay, fine, great start. Right. It's it's not that hard once you've dialed in like your message and things like that, right? Yep. Um, but tell me how you ended up getting in touch with this hypnotherapy thing. Like the, the headline reads, how you turn your interest in hypnotherapy into a course about storytelling, copywriting, and then sold a thousand copies. Like, what? Yeah. Right? What is that? Okay. So, yeah. Like, it's, it's kind of crazy, like, how it all worked out. But essentially, like, before I ever started, you know, before, like, when I was back in my day job, I kind of just started reading about, like hypnotherapy and actually my aunt at one point she was a hypnotherapist so mm -hmm. um i kind of had you know someone in the family like had told me about hypnosis and hypnotherapy and i was like oh that's, that sounds like pretty cool like i'll just like read about it right and so i started just reading a couple of books casually on like neurolinguistic programming and like hypnosis and hypnotherapy and all that stuff and i was like you know i didn't necessarily know if i wanted to make a career out of it but i was starting to get into personal development because i was yep. like starting to realize the day job wasn't for me like there's something more out there for me i don't know what it is but like personal development tony robbins like let's start like becoming a better person <laughs> yep and so i was getting into that whole thing and so then i started to realize like that there was this really cool like interesting link between like uh like language patterns and like the way that you say things to yourself Mm -hmm. and uh, kind of like your mindset and then like the results that you end up kind of creating yep. down the road. So, it, you know, it was really kind of like a light interest at the time, but essentially once I started working with her, her name was Sarah, like my coach, once I started yep. working with Sarah for a little bit longer, um, I started to, I was basically telling her like, oh, you know what, actually I kind of just realized that I think one thing, I think why I'm drawn to copywriting is because there's like all these like, I'm actually noticing that there's a lot of like neurolinguistic programming and like hypnotic language patterns mm -hmm. that are in the sales copy. And that's why they all look the same. And that's why yeah. all the videos, sales letters sound the same because they all use the same hypnotic language patterns. And that's why they're all making like hundreds of thousands <laughs> or millions of dollars per month. And so for anybody watching uh, a better version of that, that you may be able to understand is like Russell Brunson's perfect webinar mm -hmm. or Jason Fladlian's four step to his webinar. It's probably not what he calls this, what I calls it. Like, Every great story you've ever seen in a movie follows a pattern by Joseph Campbell. You just look up Joseph Campbell. That's the story. I don't care if it's Star Wars, Harry Potter, Matrix. Every great story, never great movie from Lord of the Rings all the way back in the day follows Joseph Campbell's. And it's a version of what Nico's talking about. And internet marketing terms, the perfect webinar is a great example. I'm going to blow your mind. Three secrets, epiphany bridge, close. Like every webinar that works follows that. It's the same way with sales copy. Same way with letters that work and convert. 
Same way with books that just draw you in. It's the mm -hmm. same thing, which sounds horrible, but it's so true. But yeah, continue. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you, you absolutely said it perfectly. Like that's, it's really just like a framework, right? Yep. And it's just like a, a bunch of patterns. But I think what I thought was so cool was it wasn't even like, yes, there are these like broader patterns, like at the big level, but it also came down to like, literally like just one specific word mm -hmm. or like just changing a sp like a series of words. Um, the, to me, that blew my mind that like that could actually make such a big difference. Like using, you know, like there's this thing called like change of time words or like causal links and like literally just one word, like using the word because for an example, mm -hmm. like that will, like using the word because will convince people like 80% more of the time than if you don't say the word because, even if whatever follows the because is the same. Wait, just by adding the word because makes people believe you 80% more often? Yeah. <laughs> literally just sense. the word because. I know, but there's literally been like studies, like you can look it up. Like I, it might not be 80%, but it was some really like high number. Yeah. So like you guys can literally look that up after, but like literally just using the word because before any reason that you're going to give will convince people like, a big amount of the time more, which is so crazy. That's so just been, one example. So I've been using uh, micro commitments in my sales pitches where this makes sense, right? They go, oh yeah, it's like, you can see how this impacts your business, right? They go, oh yeah, would you like to see how much it costs, you bet. So I try to get like three yeses in a row. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's relating to what you're talking about yeah. because that's the only time I've ever been able to get somebody to pay me money is when mm -hmm. I get three yeses in a row, right? So maybe mm -hmm. that's along the same lines. But tell me how you, how you ended up getting in touch with somebody like this wasn't your course that you wrote the copy for, right? That Correct. sold a thousand copies. It was something else. Can you tell us like how you found that person and things like that? Yeah. So how that worked was essentially I was actually becoming, or I was starting to get like kind of known in all these Facebook groups that I was in. Cause that was really working for me. And like I said, Sarah was kind of coaching me on how to, I guess, just like make a name for myself as yeah. a copywriter. So after about like, you know, two or three months of like, I was dropping like really cool, like valuable knowledge bombs um, in a bunch of, I, I kind of hate that term, but knowledge bombs, whatever. Um, golden nuggets. Yeah, golden yes. nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I was like just dropping like really like valuable, interesting, like basically sort of the thing that I just shared with you right now, like because thing, just stuff that people would never think about, but it was such a small tweak that they could actually like take action on that and like see a result. Yeah. So I was basically doing that like almost every day in like 30 Facebook groups. And it was like a crap ton of work to, to do that. Uh, but after a while, people started, and like actually really not after that long, it literally probably took like two months or two weeks before people started like actually messaging me. But I would say after about like two or three months, like, like someone specific like reached out to me and she was like, hey Nico, like I've been seeing that you've been posting all this really great like content and it looks like you're a copywriter like from looking at your Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm launching this like digital course and it's not the first course that I've ever launched. Like I, but this time, like she had had success in the marketing world before. Mm -hmm. um, but like, since I'm actually creating like the content and stuff and like doing a whole bunch of other stuff, like I don't have time to write the copy and like, I need to outsource it. Like, can, like, are you willing to talk? And I was like, yeah, I'm sure. Right. Um, and so I didn't know anything about like her or who she was or anything, but you know, at this point, like clients were starting to reach out to me like somewhat regularly yeah. because I was, yeah, because I was being active in all these Facebook groups. And so I got on the phone with her. Uh, she told me a little bit about uh, her business and like the previous things that she had launched. She had had like some course launches in the internet marketing world. And she also had a pretty big email list too. So I knew it was like, and she kind of explained like her expectations of how much, or I don't know if it was how much, but she kind of ex told me like roughly what she expected the course was gonna do. It was gonna be like a pretty big launch. And I was like, okay, cool. Like, that's exciting. Um, and so like in my mind, I was like, oh my gosh, like this could be really cool. Like if it goes well, like she's gonna make like a ton of money and like then like I'll obviously make money too. And like, it's gonna be yep. a big move in. So I was super excited. Um, we ended up working together. It was one of the biggest. Um, and then at that point we had a, a phone call and I was like, okay, like I'll send you like a quote. At this point, I didn't know how to do phone sales. I still don't know how to do really, like, phone <laughs> sales, but like, at this point I was like, okay, cool. Well, like I'll send you like, thanks for talking. Like I'll send you like an email with like price quote and like blah, 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 all that like after. 
You're just trying and, to get off the phone. That's what you're doing. Yeah, like, I, don't know what to do. I was like, I know what to do. Um, Cause this was literally like the first, like, uh, well, maybe not the first, but the, it was, it was definitely like the biggest, like uh, the biggest, like highest ticket offer that I was going to make. Yeah. Um, and you can already see, like, it's kind of like not the good scenario to be in where you're the one like making the offer to work with them. But anyways, that's where I was at that point. Um, and yeah, so I, I was going to work, with her for like eight thousand dollars so like write this big long sales page and do like all the email launch sequence for this big like it was like a six hundred dollar course mm -hmm. um and so she wrote back to me like the next day and she's like well like i she's like it's like a little bit much i had only really budgeted about like five thousand dollars and at that point i was just like i'll take it like five thousand yeah. dollars cool yeah fine perfect. give me money i'm yeah, in like, let's just do it because like i knew that it was going to be a big project and she and like like I said, that was still the biggest copywriting project at that point that I had done. Yeah. And she was just like a really like nice person too, and like we just like vibed well. And so like I knew it was going to be a good project overall. Um, and so yeah, we ended up working together. I had about like three weeks to do this big long sales page, um, and also all the emails for it. Like I think like eight or ten emails or something. They were, everything was like long form copy. So it was like really, and I was like nervous too. Cause I was like, I mean, I knew that I was like good at copywriting, but I had never done like one of those big fancy, like long form, nice sales. That you pages. saw on ClickBank. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, okay. And like, she had just paid me a bunch of money too. And I was like, I was still at the point where like with money, I was kind of like, I was like, oh God, like, I don't know, like, she just paid me this, like, I don't know if I can handle it. Like, am I going to be able to do this? But like, so the, basically the pressure was on and I just spent like a solid, like, I think it was about like two or three weeks. That was like all the time I had. I was like, okay, like every single day, like I'm reading through like all these, like all the, like the best copywriting examples that I, that I know. And I'm going to be like very structured about this. And like part one of the sales page is going to look like this. Part two is like this. And then like, basically like go through every single like psychological, like basically like kind of like the buying, the phases of buying that people have to go through, like yeah, in order for them to make a, a purchase decision. Like I was like, okay, I'm going to lay that all out like vertically and just like, I'm going to like make this shit work. Mm -hmm. Cause like it has to, like I just didn't have, there was no other option. Like I just had to make it like really, really freaking good. So she paid you money and mm -hmm. every day you're reading on this copy, you're trying to figure out the pattern. You, you're probably like buying the books on copywriting to end up putting yourself in a position where you can figure out what goes where, right? Following some like AIDA pattern or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, um, AIDA. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I, I don't know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. um, you write it out. Did she say this is the worst copy in the world? Did she say, I don't know? How was that back and forth trying to make her a happy client? Yeah, so how it worked, she was a really, I mean, so first off, I'm like, this is kind of like I'm a pretty humble person, but like that copy, it was it was like really freaking good. Like I was <laughs> really proud of it, and like I knew it was good when I was gonna like show it to her like right on the deadline. So I knew it was really good. Um, I mean, obviously I was like scared, but like I knew that I had put like my heart and soul into it, and that it was gonna do really well. Yeah. Same with all the emails, and she saw everything too. She had been in the internet marketing world like previously, and she was like, "Nico, this is like awesome! Like I'm really excited! Like great job!" Like, let's do this. It's launching like next week. So like, I'll keep you updated. Yeah. And I was like on her email list. So like I was getting the emails that I had written, which was cool. Yeah. Um, and it was like, okay, like, like we're, we're doing this. She was like, thanks. Like, yeah, I'll keep you updated like towards the end of it. But for now, like everything's great and we're all good. So at that point I was kind of just like waiting to like watch the actual live emails drip out and then kind of like hear from her at the very end. And I think it was like a two week launch period. Mm -hmm. And her course was $597 <laughs> at that time. And I didn't know, like she told me she had a big email list. So I like I did the math and I was like, okay, she's gonna make like at least a couple hundred thousand dollars probably. Right. Um, and so when all was said and done, like the final day before like the cart was gonna close, like in she like added something to the email that I had written, like the final email. And she added like, right now there's like this many people like in the course. Like she mm -hmm. just added that line to the top and she's like, do you want, like, if you want to join us, like you have to join, like you have to order it now. Um, and I can't remember what the number was, but the number that she wrote on there 
if you times that by like the 597, it was like $552,000, literally. In two weeks. Yeah, and I was like, holy crap, like this made like five, this made like over half a million dollars. <laughs> oh my God, the internet is so weird. I know, and I was like, oh my God, like this is a real thing. And then we, we, sing, we like talked like right after that and she's like, oh my gosh, it went really well, like this is all great. Thank you so much. Like, let's stay in touch. And oh, and actually, this was cool too. She actually invited me to do um, like a special bonus module of her course mm-hmm. on like copy that converts with Nico Moreno. And Perfect. so like it was like a little bonus module because she was so happy with how the sales copy had come out. She was like, yeah, if you want to do like a little bonus module, um, like just go ahead record it and I'll put it in the end of the course. That's so, so yeah. Cool. So it went really well. Like, thank God. I mean, it, it like it had to go really well, and luckily it did. Yeah. And yeah. So that was kind of like that was the first time where I realized, holy shit! Like, you can make a crap ton of money online, like at once, and it's a real thing. And so That's yeah, absolutely insane. You saw somebody make a half million dollars in two weeks. That's a twelve million dollar year business. Yeah. That's insane. Okay, so now that we talked about that, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which blows my mind, right? <laughs> so you did something with messenger bots, right? Mm-hmm that you use messenger bots and you wrote the copy and you made 12 grand in the first week. I have, I've never asked you about this. Mm-hmm. So like, what do you mean when you say the secret setup for your high ticket messenger bot sequence that produced 12 grand in sales the first week? Was this for your current client or was this for something totally separate or, or how did this turn out? Yeah, uh, great question. So this was actually about, um, I guess fast forward about a year when I started getting more into, you know, like I said at the, at the whole beginning, I guess like the whole beginning portion of my career, I was kind of doing copywriting. Yeah. And then I started to get more into kind of becoming a dabbler again. So then I was kind of doing like copywriting. Then I started doing Facebook ads too. Cause I was like, you know, if I want to start to launch, you know, that really successful launch for that client mm-hmm. that started getting me thinking, okay, like I got to get into like creating courses yeah. somehow. Like, I don't know how, but like I got to learn like all the rest of the skills to start creating courses too. Um, so then I started learning Facebook ads. I think that's where you and I connected. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure in Dan Henry's course. Yep. Um, and then I started doing like with that, I kind of started exploring messenger bots too. And so what I did was I ended up using messenger bots to get people registered for one of my webinars. Yep. And uh, it was basically like, uh, I mean, I didn't really know like what to expect, but I was just really what it came down to is I was too lazy to write a bunch of emails. Yep. To get people to show up to my webinar. So instead I just use a little messenger bot and use like kind of reminders and like really quick storytelling, like in the messenger bot beforehand. And I think I got like 63% show up rate to a live webinar, which is like really freaking good. Considering like, like, aren't webinars like you're jumping up and down if you get like 10% or 20% show up rate. 20% is pretty good with email. So right. I got like 63% show up rates using messenger bots. And so I was like, holy crap. Like, and I did like, I didn't write emails. So there, there was no email. I knew it was like the messenger bot that it was producing those results. So I was like, holy crap, this is incredible. I got all these really cool results for my, um, for my webinar using messenger bots. And then I just yeah. kind of started sharing the results. And then what happened was right at that point, I had then had a different business coach, like about a year later. Right. Um, so Sarah had like, we'd worked really well together, but it was kind of like just a time for me to move on. Cause I wanted to get more into like actual, like internet marketing, like yep. advertising stuff and like courses and stuff like that. And so then I had a, uh, I guess like a different coach, a, a bit more advanced in that. Um, and he had already been doing webinars. He, I think it was $5,000 to work with him. So cool. a little bit more of an investment, but I was like, okay, like I'm ready to do this. Um, so I paid him and at that point he actually had a webinar that was converting for a high ticket offer. And he saw me like, say, I'll post all this stuff that I was doing with messenger bots for a webinar. And he was yep. like, Hey, like, can you do that for my webinar? And like, if you do, like, if it works, then like, I'll give you like a really freaking good testimonial, um, assuming that it works. And right. then I was like, yeah, sure. So then I did it for him. And it worked like really, really well for him. And he got really good results with it. And he gave me like an incredible testimonial. And that led to a bunch, he actually happened to be in the Russell Brunson inner circle. No shit. I don't know if he still is. He might still be, but at that point he was. Does his name begin with an A? Yes. Okay, can we say his name or no? Yeah, you can say Adam. 
is Adam Winnig, right? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Okay, cool. No, because yeah. some people are like super like like exclusive and confidential. Some people like I like I tell everybody that I work with like bike shops and car washes. Like mm -hmm. I say their names if they're in Miami, but for some people they don't want to. So that's why I asked. But yeah, go on. Yeah, no, no, he yeah. So that's who it was. Um, and then at that point, yeah, so I got him like a really cool uh result. Like he gave and he gave me like actually a bunch of really cool testimonials because we ended up doing like more than just that first one because it was working so well. Mm -hmm. Um, but that led to a bunch of other clients. Like, I don't know, like, I honestly don't know what he said or did in the inner circle, but a bunch it of people, a bunch of people from Russell Brunson's inner circle, like within the next like day or not, I don't know, maybe not day, but like within the next like week or something, like I had like five people like reaching out to me and they were like, okay, like, let's do this for me. Right. So I don't, I don't really know like what happened over there in the back in the back of things, but like. It worked, yeah. right? I did something that, really, yeah. And so. Is that how you up, found your 25K client? Um, yeah, so how that worked was, uh, that was a little bit, I, I wanna say it was maybe like a month or two after. Gotcha, okay. Um, it, kind of, it wasn't necessarily related to that, but then, so fast forward, okay, so getting into the five, or the $25,000 client. Yeah. Um, that actually was like for a coach, that was for like coaching with me. Okay, so those aren't connected or related. I assume that like Adam Wenning was talking about it and then you landed a 25K deal. That's not correct. Um, it's so it's not, yeah, that's not necessarily like that's not exactly gotcha. Correct. Okay, but, right, continue, yeah. but they're related, so I'll kind of explain how it worked. So once I got that result for Adam and then a couple other like big clients, mm -hmm. um, then what happened is, is I was like, okay, I'm gonna start creating like or I think I had already started to create a messenger bots like Facebook group. Um, so I had like a small group of people who were interested in messenger bots learning about mm -hmm. them. And I was like, Hey guys, like I'm getting cool results. So I'm going to start like, I'm going to like launch a little course on it. Okay. Like who's excited. And then, uh, you know, a couple, a couple people like were really excited about it. And then I launched a, a, a course on it, like the first version of the course. Um, and I got people into it. And so once I had about, um, I don't know, maybe like 15 or 20 people. I raised it up and like I started doing like webinars for that course. Yep. And then at that point, um, the price of the course was like 9.97. Yep. Um, and so, you know, I, I guess like, you know, I, I, Facebook is kind of like a noisy place. Like you never really know exactly how someone finds out about you, but like one way or another, like this one guy, like he came on board, he bought the course he bought the bots course. And then mm -hmm. he also reached out to me and he was like, Hey, like, can you, do you do like consulting or anything? Like I kind of need help with like, um, setting up my funnels. Like I am kind of newer to click funnels. Um, but he had already kind of like proven that he was in, I don't know. Actually, I think he might've reached out about consulting. Yeah, no, never mind. He reached out about consulting. Like that was the first thing. Then we did funnel. I did like, I sold him like a $900, like, um, consulting package like yep. to just go through his funnel really quickly and then at the end he was like asking like he was like hey like you also do messenger bot stuff right like you have a course on that and i was like yeah it's 997 and he's like okay i want that and so he bought that Beautiful. and then yeah and then it was actually kind of interesting he started you know getting into the whole like click funnels and like online marketing world and then there, there's all these coaches out there and he was like hey like you know, like I've worked with you before, like, do you have any recommendations as far as like, you know, coaches? Cause I'm starting to look into like, you know, there's like Dan or I don't, I guess I don't want to like, I don't want to name other people, but there's like yeah. all these potential big marketers who like have coaching programs. I don't know what to do. Like, can you help like guide me? And then I was like, yeah, well like, so here's kind of like, you know, here's what I've had an experience with this person and this person, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was just like sharing kind of my feedback. Yeah. I didn't really like necessarily at this point, like how do I put it? Like I didn't have an intention of like becoming anyone's coach really yeah. at that point, but then it kind of like went back and forth and back and forth. And then I was kind of just like, wh like, why don't I do it? Like I could just do it for like for you. Like we've basically been doing that anyways. Um, so are you interested in like hearing more about that? And then he was like, yeah, like let's get on a call. And so basically yeah. how that worked. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how it worked. It happened organically. He kind of, he had purchased some other offers for me like shortly beforehand. Yeah. And then he was like looking for kind of the next step. And then, yeah, we ended up going into like a $25,000. That's crazy. Uh, 
coaching. Horribly. That's so cool. I'm so happy for you and and your client too. Like like both of you realizing, oh yeah, it probably should have been me the whole time, right? Like yeah, I know. It's it, literally like it's one of those like it's like one of those stories. It's like like the whole time the answer was right in front of you type thing. Oh, oh my god, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> So we're coming up to like a solid hour and Nico's done a really good job of like storytelling, which is absolutely really, really cool. Um, you started off uh, graduating from USC, had the job that you hated, tried quitting, then really quit, had a side gig making money online using Kindles, had two uh, startup jobs that you hated again. Go to Japan, you have no other options and you pay a business coach 600 bucks a month. Immediately make your money back and you're getting to a point where you're making two or $3,000 a month. Not great money, but good enough to not be starving. Mm -hmm. You're getting results. You're talking about your work. You're telling the world the results that you're getting without trying to be an expert. You're just saying, hey, my name is Nico. I'm failing forward. This is the stuff that's happening. And you're putting little tidbits of like, hey, I learned this thing in a couple other groups. And people start reaching out, including mm -hmm. somebody who's launching a course that sells a half million dollars of stuff because of your emails and because of your sales copy. From there, you end up meeting people who say, hey, could you do something similar for me? You say, sure, how about a messenger bot sequence? That person is in Russell Brunson's inner circle. More people find out about you. Around the same time, one of your clients through the serendipity of the universe says, how about I pay you $25,000 to coach me through a similar journey? Is that about right? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much. <laughs> Nico Life, three sentences are left, right? Like how crazy sure. is that? Um, what we're going to... Uh, Oh, so Nico's offered, by the way, like since you're at the end of the webinar or end of our interview or whatever, if you yeah. genuinely believe that Nico can help you figure out the next step of you and your agency journey, whether it comes to messenger bots, copywriting, webinars, course sales, or anything like that, he's a featured and flawed human being, openly and transparent. Like his first course sucked. His next course was okay. His third course sold a half million dollars and he's closing clients at $25,000 a pop. If you want to get on the phone with Nico and spend 15 minutes, we're going to pick three real life human beings to do so. So hashtag Nico my face and then Nico and I will pick three people to get on the phone with Nico, either as a group call or three separate one-on-ones. Um, so if you genuinely believe that Nico can help you figure out the next step of your journey, or if you want to pick his brains a little bit for 15 minutes at a time, just hashtag Nico my face and we'll take it from there. But I do want to say, Nico, um, you've got experience with webinars, right? You've yeah. got experience with copy. You've got experience with messenger bots. Is there one thing that people keep messing up time and time and time again that you're seeing people mess up when it comes to their sales letters or trying to convert or anything like that? Like just one piece of information where you're like, if anybody was just, if they weren't watching the whole webinar, just watch the last 10 seconds. Like what's that one thing? You know what I mean? Yeah. I would say the one thing that I would say like the one thing that people repeatedly ask me about and kind of like the number one, I guess, mindset block that's holding them back is, you know, about messenger bots and like selling their other products. And they're kind of just like, I see everyone out there like talking about messenger bots and like, like not, um, or how do I put this? I, I see all these people out there doing messenger bots. Like I know I need to learn them, but like, I don't know where to start. And yeah. literally everyone just thinks that they're super technical. Like they're not. No. Like if you, not. if you commit five minutes, like literally just five minutes, that's it. If you can make a commitment, to go into many chat for five minutes, like you'll figure it out. I promise. What like, I that's the secret. It's what just, I like, discovered right. with uh, with many chat is like you'll see people bragging how complicated their flows are, and mm -hmm. I'm like, that's the most intimidating thing I've ever seen, ever. Right? Mm -hmm. I treat bots just like I do email. That's a little bit more advanced. And the only reason I got through that is by doing what you just said, just going to many chat and trying to figure out and clicking all stuff. Don't do flows. Don't do segmentations, focus on broadcast, and broadcast is simply sending it out just like email. Mm -hmm. Then once you figure that out, you can have more fun, fun stuff with like URLs or like widgets on the side. That's where it gets complicated. But I guess the number one thing is just do it, right? Like that was your challenge, just doing it and less dabbling, right? Yeah. Um, there's three people that I think would be a great fit. Uh, Catherine Flores. Okay. Uh, Brian Moyers and Luis Hernandez, the three of those people look out for a, a PM between me and you and Nico, and I'll get the three of you on a group call and all that fun stuff. And Nico will make sure you're taken care of. Um, now we're going to move into the last Q and a, we've got three or four minutes. So if you've got any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, ideas, now is the time. And then we're going to bring the sucker to a close because Jeff Lopez asks, what books would you suggest, suggest to get to check out for NLP or copywriting or anything like that? 
Um, I would say cash advertising. I can't remember the um, can't remember the author's name right now, but just Google it. Like it's the first one that'll come up. It's called cash advertising. Yeah. It's so good. Cash. It's not. It's not really even about. It's not about NLP, but it's more about um, just the psychology of sales and marketing. Tell you what, this is an old like, school. It's book. so good. It's so yeah. It's really old school. Like it's super old. But like it's so good. Also, the Boron Letters by Gary or by uh, it, it's maybe not by Gary Halbert. It might be like by his son. Yeah. But it was like stuff that was from Gary Halbert and like published. I think after he died. So I think that's why it's by his son. But look gotcha. up Boron Letters. Um, as for actual NLP, um, I I mean I, I I don't know. I don't have any recommendations on. Cash advertising is good enough. Yeah. Yeah, I would um, say check that out. And it reads very much like a Dan Kennedy letter. It's like a hundred secrets to making more money with advertising. You're like, mm -hmm. that's how Dan Kennedy got me. Like when you yeah. read Dan Kennedy's letters, like they are a blueprint for psychological success. Like the way your eyes bounce, like it always bounces to a next step. And mm -hmm. like when you half read a sentence and skip around, it's like, holy crap, it lines up with everything where my eyes are going. And I must have stared at the Dan Kennedy letter like 18 hours straight trying to figure out what the hell is going on here. Like, why do I keep looking back at this letter? Like, I'm not reading it. I'm just enthralled with my eyeballs, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I'll bet you cash for advertising goes into the exact reasons why, which is really, really cool. Um, yeah, love that book. So one last question is, oh man, I just lost it. I scrolled too fast. Uh, how did you go from zero to 10K? Um, like the very first time. Yeah. So, I mean, that was with copywriting. It was really more, uh, I mean, the first thing that I did before I really had any success was I hired a coach. Yep. Um, she literally helped me make like about two to $3,000 in the first month. Um, and like I said, I mean, like you had already said, Jeff is like, it's kind of that mindset block where you're like, okay, like I know that I'm going to be able to get to this next level. Like I want to get to the 10 K I have to pay someone like whatever, like, 5k or like 2k or 1k to get to the 10k like no nah, i'm not gonna do that yep <laughs> but it's like you have to, like you have to do that and then you'll get to that next step yeah it's like it's literally like it can kind of feel like the scariest thing in the world but if you have a good vibe off of that person and like the person is a trustworthy person yeah uh, i mean like i would always say also like go with your gut if something feels like it's probably like if the person doesn't feel like it's going to be a good fit and they're not actually going to get to help you or they're not actually going to be able to help you do that um then that's that's not what i'm saying i'm not saying like go against your gut but i'm saying when it feels like okay you're really like about to do this but you do have to put up that investment before like you're actually going to learn how to make you know the return on the investment like yeah. those are the those are the moments where like where you should change, do it where like yeah. changes are made in your yeah. life it's that tr it's that forced transformation mm -hmm. um and so I, so what you're saying is that the way you got from zero to 10K was by paying somebody, a coach, to show you how to do it. She immediately got you two to $3,000. And then was there like other specific steps, like every day you're going to four or five target client groups, dropping tidbits, telling the world how good you are, things like that? Or was it just following what the coach is saying? Yeah, so the, the first thing, I would say the first thing is like developing the belief that it was possible. I knew it was possible. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. And then it was the coach putting yeah. down the investment, she showed me kind of the way. And then after that, it was kind of just like being consistent about going into these Facebook groups. Um, literally, like it's more effort than I even am willing to put in like right now in my mm -hmm. life. Like it's just at that point, I was like, I was like every day, I'm gonna be posting in like the, in like four or five of these groups and I would like kind of rotate. Um, and yeah, it was like every single day. But then like literally within two or three weeks, like people started to like, Within these big Facebook, like 80,000 person yeah. Facebook groups, like they would be like, oh, Nico's like the copywriting person. Like go to yeah. him. Isn't that crazy? Like yeah. you don't have to be an expert. Like I, I fundamentally believe you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to solve people's problems in exchange for money. Like mm -hmm. I'm not the best Facebook ads guy ever. I'm really not. If there was a list, I'd be dead at the bottom. But I'm the only Facebook guy out there that will show you what to do, how to do it, explain to do it, and offer to solve those problems and more in exchange for money. And that's a function of me telling the world about my results. And that's how I got my start with Get Clients, got my start with the MEC, got my start with Chamber of Commerces in Miami, Florida. Just going to people and telling them, like, here's the results that I got. And here's proof. And I'm not a scammer, right? It's things like that.
Mm -hmm. um, but this has been absolutely fantastic, Nico. I think it's uh, I think it's been awesome watching your journey up and up and up. I'm super glad we're in the same program, um, and you're going to make an f ton of money. Um, and uh, we're going to take you to the next level, which is really darn cool. Um, and a whole bunch of people hashtag Nico my face, like, <laughs> <laughs> which awesome, is pretty yeah. darn cool. Um, but we're going to bring this sucker to an end. It's been just over an hour. It's been Nico. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, don't hang up, but I'm going to bring the sucker to a close. So thanks right. so much. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, everybody who's watching. Really appreciate it.